All right, big timers. It's been uh, quite a while since I've been uh, using voice for a bit. So we, I am going to have to do a little bit of a mic test. Uh, Lang, can you hear me? Just checking to see whether or not you can hear me over the music. How clear is it? Is the music too loud? Sorry guys, it's been roughly about a year since I did any type of public speaking whatsoever or any type of uh, public exposure whatsoever. <laughs> so just getting this uh, just getting this a little bit sorted out. Hold on one second here. How's this length? So can you hear me all right? Okay, let me just push this up a tiny bit more. <clears throat> How about this? Yee. All right, guys. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is uh, Whale Shark, also known as Whale Shark Eve, also known as now Whale D Shark. Uh, and I'm psyched uh, to be bringing you guys a stream or a constant streams uh, big time. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I was a very early adopter of NFTs back in 2019. Uh, kind of dropped off the map a tiny bit uh, while I was dealing with some medical issues earlier this year, but all the time was watching from the backgrounds, watching watching some of these wonderful blockchain uh, games uh, and other utilities blow up. Um, I've been following Big Time right from the start, uh, very familiar with the team as well as uh, the founders of Big Time, and it's been a real pleasure to see the project grow. Uh, Lang, yeah, it's actually the D, and you know a lot of people don't know that, but uh, you know the D is from uh, is is from uh, One Piece, so kind of tipping my hat to one of my favorite animes, Monkey D. Luffy, Whale D. Shark. Um, thought it would be a nice, unique change to the nickname, given that Whale Shark was always so generic. So this is the first of probably many different type of streams that I'll probably do. Uh, but one of these streams is really, you know, again, going through this time factory that I built uh, and showing people, you know, how to organize it. You know, what are the economics behind it? What is the operations management aspect behind it? Now, we are currently concurrently streaming to Twitch as well as YouTube as well as Kick. Uh, but again, based on Twitch guidelines, I'm making sure that the chat is uh, purely Twitch only. Uh, but again, I can see the chat from all three platforms. So if you guys have a question, if you guys want to know about a certain thing, you know, just feel free to let me know and I'll be more than happy to dive in into some of the uh, thought process um, or some of the economics behind why I do things. Now, given that, uh, you can see that we're currently in my personal metaverse or my, my, my meta, uh, as you guys like to call it. Uh, it is a metaverse or a personal metaverse that is comprised of roughly... I added on an additional nine time wardens last night. Uh, so it comprises of roughly about 79 different time wardens. And I want to say about 126 spaces. Uh, for the time wardens, I only collect legendary time wardens and above. And I can go through some of the thought process behind that later on. Uh, and then after that, for the spaces, everything is epic and above, right? And I can also go through that thought process later on. So. I actually made quite a number of mistakes uh, and I actually started really delving back into the game roughly about a month ago, uh, probably just before the token launch as well as just before everything started kicking off. And there's a very specific way, you know, if, if you're doing something or if you're doing something for the economic benefits of the game uh, to be able to make sure that it's, it's, it's streamlined, right? Uh, if you don't do that, you know, I've seen a lot of personal metas when I'm... <clears throat> when I'm actually on Twitch itself. And you know, a lot of it is not geared towards operational efficiency. Uh, and on top of that, you also have a lot of people who are delving into the lower end of the spectrum, uh, which is something that I you know, really refuse to do. So why don't we do this? Why don't we talk and walk? Uh, each stream that I do is really gonna be dependent on the number of hourglasses, uh, sorry, or time wardens uh, that are available for crafting. Uh, during that time, also, it's going to be dependent on the number of people uh, that are asking me questions throughout the stream. So a single stream can go anywhere from half an hour all the way to an hour. Uh, eventually, I'll probably look to be streaming, you know, again, two times a day at most, probably for an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, but during that time, especially in the beginning, 
uh, while we are still accruing viewership, still accruing followers. You guys have me all to yourselves. So please feel free to ask me any questions regarding the economics. I have like spreadsheets upon spreadsheets of this stuff. Uh, and wow, we're going to be able to pick up some crack as well. So, you know, one of the reasons why I have or deployed so many spaces in this game is simply because of these cracked hourglasses, right? So as you can see here, the higher the level of a space that you have, essentially the higher level of uh, cracked hourglasses that you're going to be able to get as well as the number of hourglasses you're going to get. Uh, so, you know, you can see, I think if you look on the bottom left of this map, you can essentially see that I have a north wing, I have a south wing, and I also have an east wing, right? A west, the west wing is still being developed. Uh, we'll go into the west wing a tiny bit later, but that's really where I, you know, mess around with kind of like a metaverse residence kind of thing. Uh, and as you can see here, you can look actually, I don't know if you can see this, uh, you can actually see it in the bottom right corner and it says exalted small space. So every single space that is in the north wing is exalted, uh, every, uh, exalted to mythic, I would say. And then after that, all of the spaces that are in the south wing are actually comprised of, uh, I want a legendary, so it's a legendary wing. And then after that, anything on the east wing is really all of the, um, is really all of the, uh, uh, I want to say, epic, yeah. So they're all epic spaces. So essentially, depending on the rarity of the space, it'll really determine what type of cracked hourglasses or crack you kind of get. Um, and, you know, the things that you can do with these cracked hourglasses, as a lot of you guys know, is that you guys are going to be able to deconstruct them into big time itself. Now, you know, I deployed this, I deployed all of these spaces just because I wanted to kind of get a feel in terms of what the economics behind these cracked hourglasses were. Uh, essentially, I think back before the nerf, and they just nerfed this, I think about probably two or three days ago. Uh, essentially, I, if, it, it doesn't make sense for me to use my Time Wardens to deconstruct these hourglasses, given that currently, even if I construct a common hourglass, uh, you're probably looking at twelve dollars, you know, twelve dollars, uh, twelve dollars in profit, um, and you know, a cracked hourglass. Given the price of big time and given the cost of the crystals, pre-nerf, you are probably looking at about, you know, you're probably looking at about a three dollar profit uh, if you use these time crystals to speed up the deconstruction. So essentially, what I am doing at the moment, and again, don't, you know. You guys can you guys can uh, follow what I'm going to do or or not, uh, but essentially by holding on to these hourglasses, you know I can always deconstruct them at a later date. I think if you look at my upper right hand corner, uh, you can see that yeah I I don't think I've seen someone with 2.5 million time crystals. But the reason why I do it is because I don't want to be insulated uh, from any price increase or any you know sudden temporary stop in supply of time crystals. Uh, and all at the lowest price. So I buy my time crystals at the bulk of 70,000 units for 499.99. What's up? Um, long time no see, dude. Uh, I, I was just talking to the guys yesterday. Can't wait to play some uh, Blancos with you guys as well at a later date. Um, but anyway, back to, the, back to the cracked hourglasses. So essentially, I think post-nerf, I think, you know, again, you're probably looking for an epic hourglass. You're probably looking at like a $2 profit. Um, you know, even using with using that time crystal to speed it up. And at this point in time, it really isn't worth it. However, I know a lot of that is really dependent on the price of big time itself. So really what happens when the price of big time or if the price of big time ever escalates to a dollar, essentially then, you know, it might be worth it to start actually using your time wardens to uh, expedite the process of getting this all sorted out. So. I, I think we're lucky today, so we're gonna have a couple of, we're gonna pick up a bunch of crack, uh, and while at the same time also really sorting out uh, some of these um, crafting uh, that we're gonna be doing here. So as you can see, so you can see that a lot of my, a lot of my Time Wardens are already doing the um, uncommon hourglass or the resonant hourglass, and the reason behind that is because I tend not to use my Time Wardens to manufacture Echoing Hourglasses. Uh, occasionally I do, but it's more of my preference to actually purchase uh, a, lot of the uh, a lot of the common hourglasses actually from the market. Because at the end of the day, uh, when you look at the hourglass economy, 
you're the, essentially everything from the echoing hourglass, I would say all the way up to the amplified hourglass, a lot of these are going to be commoditized. Um, you know, there are so many common time wardens and, you know, there are a lot of people who are more willing to, you know, manufacture and sell. Uh, my prediction is that in the market further along as we go forward is that a lot of these a lot of these uh, hourglasses on the lower rarity tra uh, on the lower rarity traits are actually going to be commoditized and they will reach a bottom so when i was purchasing all of these hourglasses and i'll i'll talk while we're doing this but essentially when i was doing a lot of the uh, initial construction of this of this time factory uh, you know you were looking at perhaps maybe $7, $7 per common hourglass. And now basically what you're looking at is it's gone up to 12 again, simply because everyone's so excited to do this. Um, however, I do believe as the game continues to mature, essentially what you're going to see is that the price of these hourglasses, especially from the common side, are gonna drop quite a bit. Uh, I would be surprised not to see them drop to roughly about $5 a piece. And it really doesn't make sense for me to utilize all of my time wardens, which are legendary and above, uh, to be able to craft these more common these common assets, right? I think you know there were a lot of lessons learned from NFTs, and one of the things that has insulated a lot of the whales against you know the dips in the market um, are that you know if you aim for the high end stuff or at least the mid to high end range, you're relatively more insulated uh, versus you know the other ten thousand people who are trying to sell common or uncommon un uncommon assets, right? So I took that learning and also applied it to big time. And as you can see here, you know, again, I got like 13,000 mod chips. The reason why is because I think important at this point in time, particularly from a crafting perspective, uh, in order to increase efficiency, the main and the most important thing here is that you're able to level up your Time Wardens as quickly as possible. Because by leveling up your Time Wardens, you're going to get an extra shot. Uh, or you're gonna get an extra roll um, or an extra bar, sorry, um, on this bonus roll. You know, again, which, which again, if you get 50, 50, 50, that's 150% increase in what you're crafting. Um, and, you know, again, that just provides uh, a lot more expeditious uh, leveling up of your time wardens, uh, which will in turn reduce time, which will in turn increase the amount of luck that you have with this. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna re, uh, so basically, look, this is what we have here. So we got 5% less time crystals. However, you know, that's 500 time crystals to craft the common. 5% of 500 is 25. Each time I roll this 25. So this is a free roll for me, right? So it's not a free roll because I, I've rolled twice already. Uh, but at least this, this is a free roll. And I got 50% extra XP. So I'm just going to take it and go ahead with it. Um, so basically, there we go. And as you can see, right? Uh, so uncommon hourglasses, 2 hours, 11 minutes. Each, again, dependent on the level of your Time Warden, you're going to have different level, different uh, crafting times, right? And the higher that you go up, uh, the, the, faster the, the faster the crafting time. So that's why a lot of my focus right now really isn't on, uh, really isn't on crafting as quickly as possible upwards, but rather getting as much XP as possible so that when the time comes, I'm going to be able to craft at a much faster speed than most other players within the game. Um, so Langa has a question. He asks, what is the biggest weakness you see in their economy right now? And what do you feel they can do to fix it? So for me at this point in time, and again, I, you know, I think you can look at my level, right? I'll, I'll just pull up my level sheet over here. Um, you know, I'm still level 10, right? I played a tiny bit. I played a lot more and I had like a level, I think I had like a level 20 character or level 22 character uh, quite a while back. Uh, I spend the majority of my time on the economy itself. Uh, the biggest weakness in the economy at the moment right now, you know, I would say is, uh, is, is the hype, right? I think everything is extremely expensive, uh, at least on the lower tier. I think a lot, of the, a lot of the common and uncommon as well as rare assets are overvalued at the moment. Uh, simply, I think, because everyone is trying to get into some form of, of an entry point. Um, so, you know, I, I think that does need to settle a bit. But, you know, one of the two of the things that I love about big time, and if you actually go in into the economics a tiny bit, you know, what you see is that a lot of these, um, a lot of these things that they're doing are number one, extremely intricate and extremely well thought out because essentially what they're able to do 
is they're able to balance the profitability of the company with the price of the assets, with the production value of the people who contribute to the economy. There's so many levers and buttons that they're able to press and pull that it really is something that I haven't seen in an extremely long time, right? Which is the reason why I jumped in. I love, I love games. I love things that have a very well thought out economic structure. And Big Time really was one of those. Now, you know, in terms of the weakness, and you know, this could be a little bit selfish on my part, uh, but in terms of the weakness of the game itself, you know, again, you're going to have people who are going to level up. You're going to have people who are going to grind. Uh, you're going to have people who are going to grind out the big time tokens as well as NFTs. For me, the biggest issue right now is, you know, what happens to these people, you know, who only want to play on the economics of the game, right? Uh, in a fair manner, of course. Ah, oh, there we go. A rare hourglass. I think we do have an epic hourglass also, also crafting at the moment. But what I wish, you know, that they had done, and again, they might do this in the future. You know, that's beautiful. 6,000 XP. Hopefully we can level up. Are we going to level up? Nope, because usually there's an exclamation, exclamation mark on it. So we need about 2,000 more to level up here. So one second. You know, what I wish is that, you know, based on, based on the, you know, crafting and, and, and all of these things that you're doing with NFTs, you know, you're able to get, experience points as well and level up uh level up there as well so that would be the first thing that i that i wish was available uh again 30 minutes more when you're rolling doesn't really matter much for me because again i'm i am going to continue to process these into higher tiers so i'm going to hold on to the 50 percent then i'm going to re-roll again so you know i wish number one that merchants i guess a merchant class uh could potentially get xp by doing what we do because again we we do spend a significant amount of time in the game uh, but the second thing is, you know, while luck is all tied to the NFTs at the moment, it would be very, very cool to see a luck element implemented into the character themselves, right? So Will D Shark as a character has a luck stat where basically it can be applied as an amplifier um, to, you know, any of the RNG stuff that we tend to do over here. So, but Lang, I hope that answers your question, bro. So we did quite a number of uh, we did quite a number of um, what do you call that hourglasses uh, time crafting uh, hourglass crafting yesterday. So we're gonna have a tiny bit less. Oh, there we go. We got two rares. So essentially, I think we're looking for three, for four or five rares to be able to craft or to initiate the next the next epic. Oh no, we only need one more. So hopefully we got a rare somewhere lying around so we can craft the epic. I do, I, I do tend, I mean, one of the first things that I do in the mornings is actually do, I do take a look at the, um, I do take a look at the market and, you know, based on what I'm seeing, essentially this I think was like $12 today. Uh, I can't remember what these were and then after that, I know that the legendaries were selling at like 3,500 or something like that. And then I think they were listed for like 6,000. So we're really trying to get as far as possible. Personally, I have not, um, and one second, let me just, let's start off one of these. Personally, I have not sold anything on the marketplace as is uh, my MO or, or bad habits. Uh, so essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to roll this and let's get more XP here. There you go. So this is basically what, what I'm looking for. Uh, hold on one second, guys. So this is essentially what I'm looking for. This is the perfect spin, right? Uh, for this sort of time, uh, for my purpose at the moment, uh, this is basically what I'm looking for. And you know, again, every single time I spin that uh, that 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 mod chip, uh, essentially it's a dollar spin. I think I was I was calculating before, uh, but again, you know, you know, when when your time wardens are tied up for two or three days, it really does make a lot of sense to make sure that you get the correct roll. Um, if not, really, sometimes it's just a waste of time, but this is perfect. So what we are looking for is, um, we're either looking for a perfect situation is you're either looking for 50%, 50%, or you're looking for the quadruple, uh, for the triple plus the 50%, right? Or the quadruple plus the 50%. Um, so given that, you know, again, basically what you see is that, you know, uh, two hours and 12 minutes, so two and a half days, uh, exotics a level six and hopefully that's going to take us and allow us to level up i can't wait to get to level 10. all right let's see here and i'll show you guys since we do have to go into the residence later on to get the uh to get the crack 
uh, what we are going to do is uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a really short tour of the residence as well uh, as we're going through. But I think you'll see the benefits of outlaying uh, all of the uh, all of the spaces in this manner because essentially what you are able to do is just run through it straight. Uh, when I'm not on stream, usually it's just a straight run all the way through to pick up all of these cracked hourglasses that hopefully at a later date when the big time token is a little bit higher makes a little bit more sense to do. Or maybe actually do it soon so that uh, just in case there are more nerfs coming in for the big time token. So it might actually be smart to actually do all of them uh, at an earlier date uh, at some point in time. But you know, given that they were initially nerfed already, maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense. And if you guys see that I missed out on a time order or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, one second here. Uh, so all I'm saying, I would get rare or epic hourglasses if I could recharge them with a common or uncommon time order. Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, pertaining to the economy, I don't, I don't think we've seen the recharge economy come out yet. Um, but, you know, I can easily see uh, you know, people who have like the number of time wardens that I have that do recharging services, right? I, I think that would be pretty, pretty freaking sweet. Um, so, you know, how that would work potentially could be that, you know, you could, you know, for a recharging service, uh, reservice, uh, essentially, if you can actually alter the time of a rental, rent it out for, I guess, one day. Uh, and after that, with a discount code, Basically, what people are able to do is use the discount code, get that hourglass, help you recharge it over one day, and then it returns back to your account, right? Um, so I, I think I, 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 and then after that, maybe, you know, again, if, if, hold on one second here. Some have, you know, the only issue behind that is really having some sort of, you know, consumer protection. So just making sure that, you know, what the recharger has said uh, is actually done. But, you know, again, there were a bunch of ways I could have approached the economy of the game this time around. But, you know, after, you know, uh, sorry, 10 and 10, you know, again, I probably want to get at least 150. Um, it looks like I'm not getting it this time. But, you know, again, I think there, are, there were so many ways that you could try to earn money with this game, right? You know, what you could have done is you could have grinded, right? Uh, given I am a gamer, right now, I really don't... Uh, enjoy the solo play, right? The only part of the solo play that I really enjoy here is the crafting. Uh, but the solo play in terms of the actual gameplay itself is a little bit underwhelming. Um, so, you know, this is the only way that I can enjoy the game at this point in time. As I mentioned, we did do a lot of crafting earlier on today, which is why we see that actually a lot of my time wardens are actually already uh, in the process. And there we go, the final rare. So sometimes it takes a little bit to load. Hopefully it loads up and after that we can craft the epic. Oh, no level ups, no level ups today. There we go. So this is a exalted time warden. I would rather have done the epic on a higher rarity one, but you know, again, at this, oh, one second, there we go. The level up button. Okay, so we're gonna craft, we're gonna craft an epic already, I think, which is about $1,200 on the market. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm looking for these. <laughs> I'm looking for these because again, I mean, legendary, I think at 3,900, I have a spreadsheet at 3,900. It's not, uh, it, it's actually significantly underpriced. I think the, the, I think based on the analysis I was doing, a legendary hourglass should roughly be anywhere between 5,000 to $7,000. A mythic will be about 12,000 to $4,000. And after that, you know, an exalted, you know, it goes, it goes higher and higher. Um, but anyway, you know, again, when you look at that, that the price of the hourglasses also determine how much you're willing or going to play uh, or going to pay for a time warden as well. Uh, I think, in, so this is nice, right? 25% less time crystals, 25% of 500 is 75. Each roll is 35. I can roll one more time and essentially I got, basically my rolls are all free. So I'm gonna hold on to the 25. I'm gonna re-roll and hopefully get 50. There you go. So this is really, this is what I call a value spin, right? Uh, so a value spin, essentially, everything is covered by the cost, and, af and after that, I also get 50% extra XP. 
Uh, given that we're crafting an epic, I would have liked to have gotten 50-50. Um, but, you know, you, you can't get everything that you wish for. All right, let's see. So Alm is saying, agreed about the recharge economy. Only way to recharge hourglasses is to list them higher than the floor. I did a couple flips like that, buying empty hourglasses. Dude, I think it's a smart thing to do. I, I think I was watching... Um, I think I was watching the uncommons. So I think the uncommons were what? They were going for like 75. And then after that, a charge was going up for like 125 uh, or something like that around, that around that value. I mean, it's smart, right? If you're buying... If you're buying an hourglass, and the only thing it does is it just takes a little bit of time and time wardens to be able to recharge those, then essentially what you're going to get is you're, you're, you're flipping for a 50% profit over, I don't know, half a day or something. But again, for me, it's about having the flexibility to be able to do these things, uh, which is the reason why I decided to go after the time wardens. Uh, rather than the armories or rather than the forges because again I could have easily bought up uh, you know all of the available transcendent armories or armories or forges uh, on the market when I did start right I think I think you know the armories and forges on a transcendent level they were all going at like you know three thousand to five thousand dollars where you know the very first transcendent time warden that I bought was roughly about <clears throat> nineteen thousand. And I think, you know, I purchased, you know, eight different Transcendent Time Wardens all the way from 14000 you know, all the way to 20000 And I think the current list price of those are actually around, hold on one second here, are actually around 34900 right? And so this is less than ideal, right? Uh... No, I do this 525. No, I got one free spin, but I'd rather not waste it. You know, I think any anyone else who is crafting for who is crafting for the hourglasses, I mean, they'd, they'd be more than happy with <laughs> with something like this. Um, I'm saying yes because a lot of people can't afford the time warden and the hourglasses. It's, it's expensive, dude. You know, it was seventeen dollars time wardens before the launch of the token. Uh, now I think you know it was like. At one point in time, it was like 217 to 300, and I think today was like 340. Um, it's, oh, there you go. It's difficult, right? Uh, so, you know, you know, while, while I'm fortunate enough to be in the situation where I can actually, you know, play at the, uh, that's not good enough. We're actually can play at, there you go, uh, RNG rewarded. So, you know, while I'm actually lucky enough to be able to play at the higher end spectrum of the game, if I was starting out anew, you know, time wardens and hourglasses are an essential part of the economy. I, you know, if you ask me, hey, do you want to forge or do you want to use the armory to get to build, um, you know, weaponry and armor uh, versus using common time wardens, I probably would have gone for common time wardens uh, rather than doing anything else, right? Uh, because again, it, it's when you look at opportunities like this, it's about liquidity, right? Uh, you know, armor and armor and weaponry—they're not essential. I mean, they're trying to make them essential portions of the game, right? But they aren't essential portions of the of the play to earn yet, as it should be. Um, so, you know, again, it, when you do look at it, I think it's more important to look at you know what is when you look at the value chain. Uh, Dude, there we go. That's that's a god spin right there. God spin right there. Quad right with a 50%. So 200% extra. I only wish that it happened uh, when we were crafting an epic hourglass. Oh, $50. Uh, dude, not too bad. I don't think it's that bad, right? I mean, we're still so early on in the game. Uh, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see... Uh, you know, anyone who participated in the game this early on is, is actually going to do pretty well. Uh, so, you know, for me, I, I think everything everything right now is early stages. Given the point that the game is at the moment, you know, I think they have probably have about six months to a year till they actually are able to have something that's strong. Um, but, you know, all of the money and all of the investments need to be made now. Uh, I actually started investing in the game probably about two years ago. Uh, but a lot of those investments need to be made now, again, on the bet, 
on the bet uh, that this actually makes sense uh, a year later. Um, you know, one of the thought processes that goes from my perspective as well is that, you know, you really want a game that's going to have a lifespan of, of five to ten years, right? To recoup back on, and again, this is this is not this is not a secret, right? It's common knowledge because you can actually. Oh, that's that. This is like a, a settle spin, right? So you got sixty percent extra. I'm going to go through with it. Uh, it's not a, it's not a secret because you can get all the information on Dash Loot, but you know, spending four hundred thousand dollars on a game, uh, you know, to be able to recoup back, and you know, it, the game needs to succeed. Uh, which again, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not going to invest more than, or I'm not going to. I'm not going to play with more than I'm going to lose my shirt on. But essentially, you know, again, when you look at the pricing, and this was the reason why it was so compelling for me, when you look at the pricing dynamics of what is available in the market right now, a single, I would say, like a single um, <clears throat> uh, exotic hourglass is probably going to go for about a hundred thousand dollars, right? Uh, in the correct market price, in the correct market. So, you know, with a hundred thousand dollar, you know. Um, Hourglass, essentially all it's going to take is four hourglasses for me to be able to recoup my investment. And after that, everything else is profit, right? And I actually love the sort of content that's actually coming out from this merchant class um, as well. Uh, I mean, if you search on YouTube, you're going to see quite a number of people uh, talking about the economy, talking about what they think is right. And... Is, oh shoot, uh, that's all right. Uh, and also allowing people to understand that there are actually a lot of numbers behind this. If you're getting into this, you know, for to play to earn, right? Especially from the merchant side, it's essential that you do your due. It's essential that you do your due diligence. If you don't do your due diligence, you don't, and you don't have a good grasp of your numbers, you're already like five steps behind all the other people who have like spreadsheets upon spreadsheets um, of doing this. Oh, one second here, so I'm gonna craft this. There's a YouTube channel called like Undeniable Noobs or or something un something noobs and he does a wonderful he does oh there you go fifty percent nice I don't want ten minutes more so I'm going to spin again um, but essentially you know he, I think I believe he's British and basically he I, I took a glimpse at a spreadsheet that he has um, and he he showed during one of his videos I mean dude. Uh, all of us, all of us that are planning to participate actively and voraciously, um, I would say, in the economy, have done like a huge, a ton, a huge amount of, 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 of analysis uh, regarding the market, market predictors. Yep, Undeniable Noobs. Um, he does a fantastic job. I mean, I never heard of him because, again, I, I wasn't into axes. Um, and I can talk about that in a tiny bit, but... Uh, I, I know that he came. I guess, I guess looking. I, I watched the uh, YGG um, panel uh, for big time yesterday, but essentially, you know, again, he, they, I believe a lot of them came in from Axies. I was never a fan of Axies simply because, you know, for me that gameplay uh, it wasn't sustainable, and people were doing it just for the money, right? Uh, play to earn, you know, I, I think it's wonderful what happened, right? I know a lot of people who played Axis, particularly in the Philippines. Oh, dude, that's perfect. Triple adjacent. Hold on. Let's let's hold that. And after that, let's reroll. I, I think it's wonderful, right? A lot of people in the Philippines and a lot of people in developing nations were able to... Dude, RNG hates me today. Dude. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people in the Philippines and a lot of people in developing nations were able to... Uh, Dude, dude, RNG is... Oh, there you go. Uh, a lot of people in the Philippines and developing nations were able to, you know, get a sizable bag and be able to do things IRL. Uh, you know, RIP to those that, you know, stuck a little bit too long within the game. But, you know, again, what you were looking for in a Web3 game, you know, is in the second half of that title, which is a game that people want to play. Um... You know, I spoke about Big Time very early on um, when no one else wanted to play it. Uh, I want to say about two years ago. Um, started all of my investments back then, which is why I have so much, so many spaces 
uh, you know, the other one is Gods Unchained. I mean, when you look at Twitch and look at what people are actually watching uh, from a Web3 perspective, you're basically looking at, you know, uh, Big Time and Gods Unchained. And I think, you know, my... My heart still goes out to Blancos because all I remember all of the fun times that we had playing that uh, with Langa as well. It was a solid game, you know. I revisited it, uh, you know, just personally off offline uh, a couple of days back. I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the gameplay, even though it was very hard to find people who actually were playing the game. Uh, but you know, that's a solid game. That's a game that is fun to play, and people are not playing it just simply because they you know they, they want to they want to make a bag right so Alm is saying well for me play to earn is simply acknowledging that there's a big part of the gaming community player at large that are actually playing to earn but they're treated like uh, criminals in web 2 yeah dude you know playing to earn is uh, you know I, I think again at the end of the day you know I, I during the last nft bull market i was approached by multiple games all asking me hey can you you know do you want to invest in us hey you know it, it, it's a uh you know do you want to invest in us do you want to buy assets do you want to have like uh do you want to have uh yeah do you have you want to have some sacred assets just for an initial investment i turned down 99 percent uh, of all of those games, right? And I actually reached out to the ones that I actually did enjoy, and you know, Big Time was one of them. Uh, fully enjoyed, fully. En oh, dude. <laughs> See, this is this is the issue sometimes because I have so many factories. Sometimes I have one that was has just been sitting here for probably about twelve hours. <clears throat> You know, I, I really wished, and I, I still do hope that Blanco succeeds. Uh, again, if there were people who were willing to play, I'd be more than happy to play on stream with you guys. Uh, because again, it's, it's, it's a fun game in general, right? I think the, uh, I was trying to do some customization on some of the Blancos, uh, but the, the system went a little bit wonky. Eh, that's not good. We'll do it one last time, unless it's uh, extra time. Oh, there you go. RNG hates me, 10% three times in a row. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I thought this was gonna be a relatively short stream, uh, but you, you guys got you guys got me uh, all chatty and stuff. It's been quite a while. I think the last time I've been, I was on live stream was probably about, wow, uh, I wanna say more than a year ago. Uh, I, I did do a couple of speeches for, uh, for the NFT art world, but uh, all of that was pre-recorded. I haven't been on live stream for a very, very long time. Fifty percent XP. Let's hopefully. Whoa. I love the skip rarity. I've only gotten it once, and so fifty percent plus ten percent. This is. Um, it's it's just we're we're settling here, which is nice. One second. So I think the crack, uh, the cracked hourglasses or the crack was only uh, was only in the initial uh, initial couple. Uh, it was only in in the initial couple rooms. I, I think we can run through like my throne room in a tiny bit just to see what we have there. But hopefully, hopefully we have all of this done. But the thing is, if these are all not done today, then they are going to be done and completed and ready for the stream tomorrow. You know, prior to streaming, I used to check three times a day. Again, I'm not, uh, I have no intention uh, of being glued to the screen all day long because again, IRL is still a lot more fun. Um, but, you know, in general, I, I, I used to come in every morning. Uh, so once I got up, did my news, did my emails, I come here, I come in in the morning and just make sure that uh, everything was running smoothly. I'd come in again probably about roughly about 2 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, check it out again, and then after that, one last time at 9 p.m. Um, <laughs> there are probably people who spend all of their lives inside their personal metaverse. Dude! <laughs> Leg, are you spending all your time inside your metaverse? <laughs> Or just glued to the screen. Glued to the screen is fine, dude. But I don't want to be like, I don't want to be inside my personal metaverse. Uh, 
you know, 12 hours a day. I, I, I didn't trade uh, employment for, uh, for Metaverse prison, right? <laughs> Dude, you have you have the weirdest working hours known to man, my friend. Uh, you're like, uh, you're you're again. I'm in Asia. You're in Europe, but you're you are awake uh, when I'm awake, and I, I hopefully you're asleep when I'm asleep. But you're like Batman, dude. <laughs> you're the Batman of Web three. Jesus, dude, you woke up when I got up. How do you sleep? How do you sleep? In, I mean, the your 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 melatonin situation must be must be uh, must be off the rails, dude. <laughs> oh, there we go. We missed one. All right, there we go. We missed one, dude. With so many with so many time wardens, it's really difficult. I can't wait. Again, I. I I don't wish it on the community, but I can't wait till the uh, the commons are all commoditized correctly or, or the price is stabilized because, you know, given that you have a legendary, given that you have a legendary Time Warden, it's a waste of time to be crafting, you know, anything below a legendary, right? Just ideally and, and, and game theory speaking, but at this point in time, you know, crafting, crafting commons, I mean, it does contribute to the... Um, it does contribute to the uh, to the EXP or the XP. So, <clears throat> you know, just trying to grind there all the way to, oh dude, 30 minutes more, this is killing me. The RNG hates me today. Uh, you know, just trying to grind my way to, to level 10 so that at least I can have three bars instead of what I have right now. Dude, sometimes when the RNG is this bad, even if I get a 10%, I'll really just lock it in. There you go, 20%, better than nothing. Let's see here. So we've been going for about 50 minutes already, 10, 40 minutes already. Uh, I'm gonna, <clears throat> again, I kind of overkilled myself during the last uh, Web3 bull market, uh, having multiple, you know, multiple Twitter spaces and all of that. At the end of the day, I just wanna have fun. Uh, and you know we might we might get into some of that programming again later back on, later back on, but really on my own terms and really what I enjoy doing uh, versus doing it for the viewer count. Uh, I mean it was a lot of fun. I mean I, I'm sure that a lot of people got an, a good Web three education from all of that, but you know at the same time it got to the point where it was just a daily grind uh, that resulted in a lot of stress and resulted in a lot of medical issues that I had earlier this year. If you don't enjoy yourself, it's just a, it's just a fucking grind, dude. So I enjoy doing this, and this is what we're going to do, uh, guys. If if you guys are there and out and playing, uh, and you're level ten or level fifteen, let me know. I'd love to play some big time. Uh, I just don't want to play by myself <laughs> because the solo grind, the solo grind is horrible. The solo grind is absolutely terrible and trash. Um, I do hope they realize that and realize that there are some solo players that would like to play. <clears throat> I understand that I understand that the network effects um, are a lot better uh, when there are more when there are more people playing. But you know, again, Jesus Christ, Lang, dude, how are you level thirty? Who are you grinding with? We got to pick up these hourglasses before they disappear as well, by the way, uh, because, you know, I made the mistake of uh, not picking them up about two, roughly about two, two, two days ago, roughly about two days ago, uh, and they all disappeared. I, I wanted to fucking shoot myself in the head. I um, uh, struggled a lot with mental in 22 because of the extended bull run and grind them all. Dude. Uh, um, it was it was absolutely terrible. I'd rather do this, you know, coming from someone who was streaming and playing with like 300 to 400 people in a, or not playing, like streaming and talking to 300 to 400 people uh, in a single Twitter space. You know, I, at the end of the day, it just wasn't that fun after a while, right? I, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that, you know, some people thrive on something like this. Um, uh, but you know, I'd rather just be chatting with you guys here and having fun, uh, rather than doing shit like that. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. Dude, how are you guys, dude, what are you guys doing? I, I cannot solo grind myself up to 33. You guys got to like start, if you, if you get new pocket watches, do you guys get to, uh, do you guys, are, are does the, does the, does the level lower or is it just based on rank? All right, there we go. So, oh, 
So this is the first view uh, that you guys get on uh, on my personal metaverse. Again, I bought all of the rarest assets. You guys know me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for, for nice assets. Um, so essentially what I did was, you know, there's no real uh, utilitarian purpose to decorations at the time being. But given how much they're integrating NFTs into the game, it's hard for me to believe that, you know, decorations are not going to play a part um, of some sort later on in the game. So, you know, again, preempting anything that they might do, because again, they have, if they're building out an NFT, they need to actually provide utility to the NFT rather than, oh, it just looks cool. And very often when you look at games or when you look at utilities, essentially the higher the level of your NFT, essentially, again, the, 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 the more benefits that you're going to receive. So I bought up a lot of the I bought up a lot of the uh, of the nice the nice NFTs. My favorite, I'm sure this is like a community favorite is the dinosaurs. Right. So I got two dinosaurs. I got benches for people to hang out here. Uh, you know, this might be a little bit egotistical but you know I, I got the throne I got the uh, I got the uh, I got the lamps leading up to the thrones and after that the rarer Egyptian lamps um, and then after that you know I haven't spent as much time as I should uh, you know building up my personal metaverse space uh, but also put together a bedroom of sorts that lead to the throne room so basically what you have here is you have the Egyptian showcases you have the desks you have the Ar I think this is the Arthurian bed um, which is again pretty neat. And what I'm planning to do after this is probably extend the um, extend the real personal metaverse uh, out this door, uh, and then after that, uh, you know, probably do something over here to the tune of like a, you know, maybe maybe like a make a dining hall, right? I haven't given up on the fact that you know, again, what I might do actually uh, is you know. You guys are all from Elite, you know, at the end of the day, you know, building a guild is, is tons of fun, you know, playing with all of you guys, that could be a lot of fun as well. Um, you know, just making sure that we revive the Elite server and then after that, making sure the Elite server benefits from all of these Time Wardens as well. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it could be pretty cool to have a guild and, you know, when we do have that guild, that metaverse is ready to rock and roll, right? So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run shortly uh, into some of the wings that we have. Right. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not losing out on any cracked hourglasses just in case they tend to uh, disappear after I go. Uh, I did do a short tour on this before, but again, you know, if we do decide to do a guild, everyone has their rooms, right? Um, and usually if I go to the first three and there are no cracked hourglasses, it means that there are none. Uh, so I think we're good for this space. These are all epic spaces, by the way. And after that, we're just gonna check out the Southern Wing real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Langa, thanks for sticking around, my friend. Uh, how was the uh, how was the audio on this? Sorry, I, I have a new boom mic coming in because again, I when I gave up on streaming, I, I donated mine. Uh, to streamers who would actually use it. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get a new boom mic coming in uh, sometime this week. So just looking for crack. <laughs> oh, it's been really good to see you, my friend. I know that uh, it's it's been fun. It's been fun hanging out with the both of you. And uh, I know it's, oh, it's, it's probably been about a good year and a half since I last saw you, dude. But I want all of you guys to know, you know, even though I've been away, the team has not stopped uh, in terms of working. So, you know, it, it, it's actually uh, just waiting for the appropriate time to start rebooting everything again uh, with the correct projects uh, so that, you know, whether that's the well community or whether that's elite, uh, everyone can have a bunch of fun while we're doing it. But anyway, guys, the stream went a lot longer uh, than I imagined it was going to be. Usually I stream for about half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, Lang, um, guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for being here with me. I really do appreciate it. I'm probably going to stream once a day. As you guys can see, there weren't a lot of Time Wardens that required a lot of crafting today, but you guys got me to hang in here anyway. 
Um, so probably I'll do this. I'm pro- most likely going to do this uh, every single day, once a day, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. You know, whether there's two of you, whether there's 20 of you, whether there's 200 of you, uh, you guys should hop in. We can talk about the economics of the game. We can talk about Web3. We can talk about crypto, anything that you guys want. Uh, and it's a good time, right? Uh, while we have low view count for you guys, uh, so I can chill out with you guys one on one. So I hope all of you guys have a good day. I'm gonna get started on my IRL life, right? Uh, sorry, IRL stuff. Uh, and I hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Lang, um, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys soon.